to the front. Let's get friendly. Except don't take this road because I have coughs. <laughs> <laughs> so don't take this road. I'm prepared. <laughs> and I have two. Okay, so um, we I do have cards in the back to register. So in case that after this is all done, just pick up a card and just register for services. But essentially, um, if you all are here today for this presentation, it's about strategic planning and resume writing. Beth, or military spouses. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, so um, have you guys ever heard of Hire Here in CSA? Of course, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are a national nonprofit, and we have a of services that helps veterans and military spouses transition into civilian workforce. How we do that, one of the main services that we offer is resume development. We're very good at that. And then you just basically have someone that checks in on you like every two to three weeks to see how you're doing and how you're progressing with your career goals. So for today, I want me, what I wanted to do, uh, well, before we get into that, so we talked about networking. There's a lot of great events you guys are going to. I want you guys to take a quick picture of this. When you start getting nervous when you're talking to somebody, go to this. It's like, hello, my name is, and this is what I am an expert in, and these are the three skills that I have, and this is the education I have. This is how you do your 30 second pitch to someone. Very quick, you'd be surprised how quickly that can go unless you have a ton of education and certifications to pick your top two <laughs> and then be able to say this. So I just wanted to start off with this because this event and other events that you probably are checking out is that networking is very key and you want to be able to introduce yourself so that you're memorable. Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. So, Technically, these workshops are like an all-day workshop, but for today, we're only going to do two, and we're going to slam it into 45 minutes. So that's a lot that's going to fly by. What I want you guys to know is that we do have a virtual workshop that we schedule on October 15th, which is coming up, and it's about 9 to 11, and it covers all the material that you just saw from the four modules that were shared. I'm giving you kind of the sound bites of it, so I wanted you guys to go through knowing what you need to do to start planning your strategic plan to transition into the career you want to get into, but also just know the basics of resumes. You're not going to be an expert here, and that's why I really want you guys to register for our services so that transition specialists can assist you and, and get that really finely like tailored resume started so that you can start tailoring it for other positions. Okay, so um, my name is Jamie Rapunley. I am very fortunate. I work out remotely here in um, Southern California, but our headquarters is in Georgia. We have six offices that all provide remote help to clients. Um, and so I am here today. Um, I've been uh, working in veteran employment for about seven years, but career workforce development for 10 years. Um, and why I love hiring heroes is because they they're very effective and very efficient, and this is the type of services that you will get when you register. Career coaching, first order would be resume writing, so they're going to get your resume within four days of the initial assessment. Mock interviews, mentoring, we have a network of 700 plus mentors who volunteer their time to assist us, actually. The person in the back is one of our, our volunteers as well. <laughs> uh, job sourcing, we help with um, employment, so we do have employers that we work with us that match you with opportunities. Um, it could be for a job board or our virtual events. So we do have career events, we have virtual career fairs. So October 24th, we also have a virtual career fair, all free for veterans and military spouses. Okay, so our services work. So as you can see, we're here in the gear shift, but only you guys can make the movements. So you have to take initiative. You can't do anything and predict what you're doing unless you talk to us. It's the only way that you can really do, become what you want to be is if you take the initiative, listen to advice, move yourself forward with all the resources that you have to offer. So this is all great, but if you don't sign up, you're not going to get anything. So we want you to make sure that you have to empower yourself with all of the different resources that are available. Okay, so we're going to go through this quick, and so I'm not going to take questions after. This is strategic planning. Military. So this is actually for you, and I think that's the hardest part for vets and military spouses. It's like, how the hell do I start thinking about myself? And like, what does that mean when it comes to finding my next career? Just defining what you want to do next in your career is even just hard, figuring out what, what you like, what you don't like, you know, what, do you, what steps you have to take, and all that kind of now, all that takes time. And so what we want you to do is start thinking about... So, let's 
let's talk about the truth of the job market. You know, there are always jobs out there. You know, what you have to think about is location, your income. Where are the jobs at? Are they going to be in remote areas? Do I want to accept to come in? Probably not. But, <laughs> which there are jobs in South Dakota. <laughs> so, but, and also you have to, um, you know, know whether or not, like, if you're applying effectively. So if you're sending out the same resume to 500, like, employers, you better believe that that's probably not working because you're not looking at the job description. You're not tailoring it, your resume, to the job description. Now computer systems are making it harder for people to get picked up through their ETS system, applicant tracking system. So you have to find a fine balance of networking, um, applying for jobs, informational interview. All this stuff kind of ties in to how you get placed into your job. They need to know you and they have to like break away that whole you know computer system so that they can pull you out of that and then interview gets to know you. So best ways to find a job. So essentially what we wanted to show the breakdown is that really it is about how you're networking. 80% of people who get employment is through their networks. You can look for and ask for job leads. I will say if someone came up to me and is like, hi, I'm in need of a job, I'm unemployed. I would probably be like silencing them immediately because of course everyone needs a job. But why does that matter to me that you need a job? You have to be meaningful to people. Um, knocking on the door, prospective employers, you know, finding out and doing your research, that's really important, but you also have to find out whether or not that's really happening at that company. So really it's who you talk to that's gonna really find out who are the real people that are hiring you and that there is a need to fill those positions and if you're a right fit for that culture. So your roadmap, okay, so this is what the idea is that you guys want to set yourself up. Prepare, make a plan, recognize what your barriers and advantages are, identify what goals you might need, maybe that's education, maybe that's a change of where you want to get a job, maybe it's not to be in San Francisco, maybe it's somewhere else, maybe it's in Washington. You have to really figure out what's your personal needs in order to define your plan. Your plan. Stay realistic, let's say you have no experience in, in the IT field. That means that you're going to have to take in an entry-level job versus going in with what you did in the military. So you've got to think about what those opportunities look like for you. And depending on this relationship, that's how you're going to stay realistic with your, with your with executing your plan. Okay, so this is statistically what folks think about our veterans, veterans and what they're facing in the in, in finding employment. So do you guys agree with this? Like 60% of people feel that explaining their military skills um, is like a challenge for them. Have you guys seen that for yourselves? Yeah? Okay. So that's what this is also perceptions. This is all the veterans that are are, are taking this survey. Um so 40% feel that employees don't understand military culture. That is true. Um 28% feel employers um, that employers feel that veterans don't have the adequate skills. As you can see, that's low. So that's not true. And then employers avoid hiring veterans. That's also not true. That's very low on the bar. But people have that perception that they think that those are the reasons why they can't get employed. These are all the things that why veterans, why employers want to hire you. They see that the, the skills that you came from all have these different soft and hard skills. So these are all very important, and they all clearly see that but because that's why they're targeting veterans um, for their companies. It really does bring a lot of innovation and diversity into your company. Okay, so SWATs. If you guys heard of SWATs before, okay, now do it for yourself, not for a company or for a project. So thinking about what your strengths are, what are your weaknesses? If you felt like you need to get certifications to make them more employable, that's going to be really important to you. So how do you find those opportunities to, to help your strengths? So what could be, could be like taking in like a training at uh, was it Syracuse University's IBM program. That could be an opportunity for you. What kind of threats do you have? So this could be all different types of issues. It could be maybe your background issue. Maybe it could be um, that you don't have um, like a, a good brand out there that people don't know who you are. So you've got to look at all the big picture stuff of what could be affecting your brand and who you are. Maybe it's your Facebook. And unfortunately, people still love to put up their stupid party pictures for everyone to see because they want to be cool. Get rid of those pictures. Those are going to ruin your brand because that's what you're going to see. You're this party person, and that was professional. You want to hide that when you're looking for employment. Okay, so your research. So there's lots of ways that you can research, okay? Cost of living or wage expectation. You know, we are very expensive here in Southern California. 
you need to know what you need to make up the income to make to allow you to live in Southern California. How are you and your family able to be in, in the different location? Um, is it compatibility? Is the company and the companies you're looking for matches what you want? If it's a small, you know, mom and pop shop that you would rather have versus a corporate company, all this stuff is really important to what you guys and what you guys can be at in the home of life. Um, so essentially, you just have to focus and keep your time to think about the things that you need. You can find this information um, on Department of Labor, Glassdoorsalary.com. All these are great resources for you to get a picture of what what you can get um, in, in the different markets and in different um, areas. Okay, so calculate your salary. We keep talking about salary because I think that's really important. The reason why we emphasize is because you're not going to be making what you're getting with the military. I'm sorry, but give up on that thought that you're going to be getting that unless you're doing that in the military. There's no way they're going to be taking a management position immediately if you don't know if you've ever had the experience before. You just know what you have as an experience what the education and certifications mean. Being a security, uh, security clerk will totally help you with finding employment. Federal contractors are always looking for security clerks. It's so hard to find. So all this matters to what you what you need, with your, where you live, what your position is, so what, what responsibilities you're looking for, and then what benefits and perks. Maybe you have a family and you're just tired of working 60 plus hours because that's what you do in the military. You want to do 40 hours, clock in, clock out, and leave that five. A lot of people want that, and there are companies that offer that. They want you to focus on quality of life. Okay, so essentially, this is kind of the thought of how to uh, make your exit plan. You know, draft and list your plan and list goals, put the plans into motion, and then launch yourself. So really, we would say that it takes you a year to start transitioning, and that's why we want to talk tackle and get in front of veterans that are separating when they're about to leave in, in, in a year. But really, what you're actively doing is six months to three months is when you're really going to be looking for um, employment. Okay, so this is your battle list. You know how they're saying you have to juggle it? So you have to be able to do your application while networking. Also, taking the time to set up interviews. Your schedule should not be empty. You should constantly be looking for people, engaging with opportunities, maybe it's an information session around the employers, maybe it's a job fair. But this is how it should look like. If you're spending eight hours submitting resumes, that means that you're not doing a good job. You could say that I applied to multiple jobs, but if you applied for the job and never connected to the recruiter, that's a problem. You have to you have to connect to a recruiter after you apply for a job. Okay, so that was fast, and I'm sure you guys are far beyond that, but you still have to reiterate what the strategic plan looks like so they can get it down to paper and what that looks like for you when you market yourselves. So how do resumes look like? So there are various types of resumes, chronological, functional, the CV, and then federal. Okay, so I think people are using chronological or functional in this room unless you're going after government jobs, and that will be the federal resume. Do not use a federal resume for a federal contract job. People get that confused often, and they will put and give out a five to eight page resume to a federal contractor who does not need that. They need the chronological resume. And so chronological is one to two pages. For different industries, entertainment takes one page, but for experts, it takes two pages. Functional is for someone who doesn't have the direct experience. So let's say that you're starting to develop your, um, your brand and your reputation of being an IT professional. You want to highlight your education. You want to share all that information. And maybe that might not be your um, past experience. Maybe you were doing infantry, but that doesn't really share much about your IT experience. So you want to highlight and move everything to the front. So this is how your resume will look like. The first thing that they're going to see, and I'll, I'll pop back, is the top third of your resume. This is the most important piece when someone scans your resume. Take some seconds to look at this. If you don't have the keywords, like as you see at the top, everything's bolded. So of course your name is very important, but you see at the top, it says veteran advocate and workforce management professional. Once I see that, I'm gonna go into reading the, the summary. And then I'm gonna look at your expertise because that's easy to read because it's bolded. This third of the page is super important to lure the recruiter to continue reading your resume. So that part is super key. And as you can see, this is how the resume looks like. So you have the professional summary, areas of expertise, your experiences, education, certs, and technical competencies. 
And then with the top third of the page, um, you want to be able to communicate if you can do the job. If you're if you're capable of having the background experiences, so you can say that like I have 14 plus years of experience doing logistics and telecommunications through global experiences in the military. That'll catch my eye because it says you have 14 years of experience. And then you want to show more impact. So the, the goal is to show that you can do the job that they're that you're that they're that you're applying for. Okay. Make sure that this is clean and, and it, it's um it's legible, of course. So you don't have to do like your your uh, address. You can just be city and state, since now people are more concerned about their identity. So city, um, state, zip, your your LinkedIn. Sometimes those links may not work. So usually we recommend saying LinkedIn and then putting your name down. Because then if you're like me, who has no other room probably in the world, I'm going to be the only person that pulls up. Luckily, but um, you can put the LinkedIn URL. But we kind of recommend that you just put your LinkedIn profile and then the name and this part. So, so this really highlights about four to five strong statements about yourself. This can only be found if you write your resume. So you can spend two or three hours trying to figure out who am I? If you write your work experience, you will find out all the great accomplishments you've done. So even though we're telling, talking about this first part, we're going to get into this part. This part is where you start discovering all those amazing accomplishments that you've ever done. You work through what was it present to past, and this is how you write your job description. So name of the company, location, the duration, your job title, define what your role was, like the, the responsibilities, and then share accomplishments. And then if you guys wanted to, we can also, I'll give you, you guys my, my business card and I can send you guys this. Um, PowerPoint. So you want to talk about your accomplishments. So defining your role, but then accomplishments are separate. So you want to give like one or two statements, maybe just one, I always say two lines of your role and then go into accomplishments and have three, maybe eight, but I usually say three to five accomplishments for each job description. So rules for accomplishments. Please don't reference yourself like a story. <laughs> um, make sure everything's action, but also past tense. Um, use quantifiable information. So you can pull job descriptions and see that job um, online, and you'll see like, oh, it says all these qualifications are looking for. You want to be able to say, I do that in a different, in, in, in your own words, but also say, but I did it in the past, and this is the impact that I made. You want to show impact bullet points. So this is how you do it. You want to show efficiency. Maybe you solved a problem. Maybe you saved a, a company money. So logistics is really easy because there's so many logistic resumes. So you can say, I manage the property of like weapons and equipment that value two million dollars, and with my like operational efficiency, I save us thirty percent of the time that would take to do the project. That says a lot, right? So it means I'm really good with process improvement. I'm really good about saving money and protecting goods. So I would trust someone who is like responsible for million dollars of like equipment. So you want to be able to ask those questions: the what, the how, and what did I do? Like, what was why was it so important that you need to know that I did this job responsibility? Okay, so let's do an example. So responsible for training 40 Marines. The way that you could make it better is to really give a story of what happened. You trained those people, and then with the maintenance production techniques, you decrease the downtime by 30%. Big difference, right guys? So it could be just, okay, he was responsible, but what did that mean? And then because you described what you guys did, now I know you did maintenance, so now you're an expert in maintenance. There's a lot of levels to what that translation means, and that's what we want you to do. You can pull a responsible for training 40 Marines from a performance report. And this is what they're looking for. So another one, so expertly inspected workspaces, that is very ambiguous and there's only three words and this is what we would want you to expand it to. I mean, this is kind of long, but we would want you to expand it to that, to that level. So you ex um, inspected three departments, which is bigger, identified 15 safety violations, developed correction plans, and then mitigated risk within five days. That's like way better, right? That just describes everything that you did. It was like a whole lot more work. Then maybe someone just walking into a room is like, check, and then the safety guy leaves. 
<laughs> this is much better. It's deeper. It's like now I see that you had not doing this. Like I'm sure you did this over a period, but you might have a team that's helping you do this because it's what three departments. Okay, so I'm going to go back. So all this stuff that you just defined about your accomplishments, you're going to be able to pull those strong projects that you really worked on. Like maybe it was a one year project and you were so proud of it. You want to go back and include this in your professional summary. Picking out those really strong projects, and again, relatable to the job you're applying for. To get started, you just wanna pick those best projects, and you're like, yeah, I did that, guys. Like, this is my favorite project that I worked on, and I'm so proud of it. You don't have to talk about the thing you hated, but you talk about all the great stuff you loved, and that's why you put it at the top, because you're gonna be excited to talk about it, you know? Um, so that's, so we always say work on this piece last, so that you don't get stuck on your professional summary because you can i mean i can spend there for like five hours just staring at it i'm like i don't even like the word i used i want to use a different word you can just be nitpicky but really to get you started is to really work on your work experience um and so this piece is kind of like your nine bullet points especially for it jobs you're going to want to focus on what those main qualifications look like and you want to make sure you, you accomplish those and have it in those nine bullet points because that's what they're going to read really quickly they may not read it in the paragraph that you wrote, but they're going to read that really quickly with the nine expertise the bullet points. Okay, we're going to fast forward. Okay, so now this piece. So there will be education under the professional summary that we prepare. There is a piece that says career supported by education. And these are the, the certifications I have. However, you can go crazy and list out everything that you ever accomplished within the 10 years of your experience. Um, under after um, your work experience. So education, um, any specialized training that you did in the military, notable awards. A lot of people don't know what this means, but we want you to, if it comes up in conversation, you want to say, hey, I did, I got a commendation medal. Like I got these really great medals because of the things I worked on. Technical skills. So even though this is at the bottom, I actually will say for you guys to move it up to the top. So I would recommend moving this right beneath um, the areas of expertise because they mirror each other. They're going to show that you were able to do that and they're going to show that you accomplished that with different certifications. So I would actually recommend moving that to the top. Okay, what time are we? Are we doing good on time? Yes, okay, great. Okay, so let's talk about the technical skills. Okay, so um, this is great for you all, especially for those who are doing like technical types of roles, coding and programming and analysis work. These are the things that you want to be able to show that you're capable of doing. Your hardware, your soft skills, your software, um, analysis, architecture, network, all that stuff, you want to be able to, to, to describe that on your resume, but have that as your areas of expertise. Okay. Oops. Okay, we went through this. Okay. So other um, sections that you could do, you can talk about your languages or organizations. So if there's a company that really supports a nonprofit or a volunteer, like um, volunteer organization, or maybe it's an association, you should definitely write that down that you're a part of and affiliated to that association because then that means that you are connected and that you guys are in the same community. Okay, so I do this all the time. I think I'm slightly dyslexic, so I don't, I miss words when I'm writing. Have someone else write it or look at it for you because it's just a nice little screenshot because you can read something and then end up missing like like lots of words. <laughs> so typos are really big on resumes why people pass on people. So simply as like doing a spell check will get your resume passed. That's like humongous, right? So you just want to make sure you give the most final draft possible, especially if it's a company you really care about. You want to be able to like get someone to look at that. Please just do like a like a check for me for my sanity so I know that I'm reading everything correctly and then sending it off. I know that sounds tedious, but like your friends, you guys will do it in your little support groups and you guys will do it for each other. And and that's really what, what happens, that you really meet your mentors or your friends, people who you can rely on to help you look at everything. Um, I feel like I've never gotten a paper resume like forever. I think everything's online. so. Don't even try to go crazy with a portfolio of like nice things. Like you just submit it online. A lot of people will throw that away because it's just like a flyer that no one wants in their car. Um, don't include photos unless you're in the entertainment industry. Some of them do require photos, but really most likely they don't really require a photo of you. 
So this is the part I wanted to get to because this is going to happen super often. You guys are going to be tailoring resumes. So I just told you like, this is how you write a resume. But now you've got to figure out like, how do you make your resume speak to each job? Because you have to basically say, I can do that job. But you can't do that job if your last job was not the same. And so the idea is to show them, I can do that job because these are the skills that I have. So we want to show you where to target those areas to tailor your resume. So reading the job description, I will say this now and you guys can write it. Jobscan.co will take the job description and your resume and it'll come up with the results to tell you how well your resume matches the job. And it'll tell you keywords that are not being used in your resume, but maybe used multiple times on the job description. And that's where you want to go back to analyze your resume and like say, I need to switch up my words to use what the words are saying in the job description. Um, analyze what employers are looking for, um, extract keywords from the job posting, and then use the, those words and phrases in your own application. Okay, so I want you guys to beat the applicant tracking system. More HR people are hating this. That's why Joanna does her recruitments differently because she really hates this too. It really stops you. And guess what? The companies have to use these big systems and those systems are flawed. I have yet to hear the best applicant tracking system. No, everyone hates it. And that sucks because that's the only way that you can apply for these jobs. And this system is preventing you from getting through. And all you really have to do is to make sure that you're telling your resume to what the job is, is um, speaking to. And that's how they're gonna pull that, pull your resume. I mean, Joanna can speak more about it because I'm talking about in generalities, but she's seen it, she's seen it face, like head on about like how this like uh, eliminates people from being a prospective candidate when clearly they are a prospective candidate. Um, so you really want to make sure that there's nothing funky, like it could be formatting issues. Maybe you put something in the header or the footer, and that could have been a reason why the applicant tracking system spat your resume out because they didn't like it. You really want to make sure all those words are there and that it's very simple so that it could really perform the assessment that you're a right match. Okay, so fancy fonts, logos, graphics, like really get get rid of the fluff. For tech field, I think you guys are good about not having fluff. Entertainment's a little different, but for guys in tech, I think you'd like, you want like black or white, or black and white. Like you really want something simple and it speaks to the point. Okay, uh, so when you do your tailoring, these are the areas that you guys are gonna be focused on tailoring. It's the third page, right? The, the top of the third page is gonna matter to you, matter to the people who are looking at your resume. Um, it's gonna be looking at that, that under, underneath the line is like what your defined job title is or what your expertise are. Um, and then it goes into your um, nine bullets of expertise. Those are gonna be really important that you tailor, make sure that's different for every job that you're applying for and that it matches what you see in the job description. So tip for the job scan, I would use job scan to find out what words are being used and they'll say nine times that operations have been used throughout the resume. That better be at that <laughs> bullet. It was better say operations like at least twice or three times in the beginning. And then throughout the resume, I have to make sure I keep using operations, operations, operations. Um, so that's your way to targeting what those key phrases are is to use the job scan. Um, unless you're brilliant at looking matching words, but I can't see that <laughs> over like with an overview of a job description. I want to be able to see that. But that helps you see all those like different things that you might be missing when you're applying for jobs. You can read it and say, I, I, you know, I'm qualified, but your resume is not going to say it unless you use the language that they're using. Okay, so here's an example. Training specialist job description. We're looking for a training specialist to enhance the competency. So first thing I'm going to write, I'm going to put training manager. <laughs> Very obvious change. Okay, responsibilities, delivering training courses, delivering training courses, identifying training needs, like literally took the key phrases that mattered in that job description. Building annual training programs, so like literally you're inserting that information into your little cookie cutter template that you put together of your resume. It's really simple, right? So if you at least do this, you're getting closer to getting selected or to be picked up from this computer system. So requirements, instructional design theory. I'm gonna put instructional design on my first bullet. 
full training cycles, training cycles. So do you guys start seeing like the differences now? Yeah, okay. Okay. <coughs> so we don't want you, so I think people are used to like, I need to share everything because they think everyone needs to know everything. Cut out the jobs that are not relevant. What I would do, sometimes I would say applicable like employment history and then other work experiences. Just if I really wanted to show that I didn't have gaps in employment, like I would do that. However, like for something that you guys are applying for, you know, highlight the jobs that matter to the employment that you're, you know, the employer that you're applying for. Okay. Wow, I finished quite quickly for 40 slides. <laughs> okay, do you guys have questions? I know we want rapid pace, but I will give you guys my business card and you guys just can send me an email. I can send you the slide deck. But what we really want you to do is to sign up for our services because we're going to write the resume for you. As long as you call and pick up the phone, we will go through your assessment and we'll take about like up like an average of four days to turn back a resume for you. Um, so you don't have to ask me for resume advice on your resume. We can get you help with an actual transition specialist. Um, but I can give you guys a slide deck if you guys want my, my business card. Are there questions you guys have? I have a question. Yeah. So the military you talked about having the percentage that you increase stuff. Yeah. Like, that can be really challenging in the military because if you're just told to do something yeah. and then you get it done. But you don't know how much you increase efficiency. So how do you how would you try to translate that for civilians to understand like get something like that? Where does that number come from? So I, I feel like you can give an estimation, but like, let's let's do by day. So let's say that project is supposed to take you like two weeks to do or three weeks to do. If it took you less than that time, then I would use that as your indicator. What's challenging though, is that your memory. Now, I can't remember a lot of stuff that I just did and I did well on. So that's like the hard part is like tracking all these great things that you've done. But I mean, if you can explain how you did it and that know that you created an impact by reducing the time, or maybe it's a value that it, of the equipment that you manage, and there was zero issues. You can put down that there, you know, there were zero issues with with like the with the results of my work, and um, we were able to move forward and be able to get other things done. Um, so as long as the you can give out some approximations, I mean, I think you could say like, yeah, that took me like maybe I, I probably reduced it by twenty percent of the original time. Like you know, just kind of estimating it. But I would say. If you have a pretty decent memory, just like I remember cutting that. These people arrived in the past, and that would be they need the cost of But we also have those additional qualifications that are really are not requirements for the job, but they help you do the job better. But if you're talking to a recruiter or a manager or somebody else, and you meet the qualifications, what that does for you is now get your resume potentially into somebody's hands who might have.
Yeah, I mean, honestly, the tutors are looking for people. You talk to their tutor first. If you can do that before tailoring your resume, like, I would highly recommend that. And that would be ideal. I talk to the tutor, tell them what I'm looking for. They can give you tips on how to apply for that job. You can verify when that job is up. And then they'll, that, that will be the actual assistance in tailoring your resume. So you know exactly what they do to highlight your exercising on that, on that job description. So, it could be really awesome. Just reach out to somebody. So, Yeah, no, it's very awkward because, like, you need something from them, right? Like, you really, like, you can be, you can be shy away because, like, I don't have anything to do. They know that these tutors are looking for people, so they're, like, they're, like, craving your attention. So if you can simply introduce yourself, go back to that value proposition just to kind of get it warmed up and say, this is who I am. I saw, I got your profile, I look at the job, and, like, showing your research. I would talk to somebody if they did their research. If I get empty messages like, hi, can you help me? What? I don't know. Like, you didn't say anything to help me get you to help you because you just said help me. Like, those are messages that are infuriating to people. Target your questions. Ask specific things that you've done your research on before you approach someone. Even if there's opportunities to volunteer and that person's working on that project, if I have someone volunteering to help me with an event, I'm like, oh, wow, I really like this person. And then when the job pops up, I'm going to say, Hey, apply. I like you. And then I would do a recommendation because I got to know you. So there's opportunities to volunteer like completely, but even if you don't have those opportunities, just like get to know the person by looking at their profile, doing research with the company, and finding out whether or not it matches while you're asking for help. You know, and, I mean, I will like someone who's just saying, hey, can you help me move? Like, I'm going to be avoiding you <laughs> until you move. <laughs> I think everyone gets. I feel like um, LinkedIn is a lot easier. Create your scripts. Like you can do some stuff that kind of really defines you, but make sure you tailor tailor your introductions to people on LinkedIn. So you don't want to get the same script again because it doesn't really apply for every person.
Godsand.co. Yeah, Godsand, Godsand, Godsand. And then I have um, cards in the back to help you guys register. But um, if you guys, I don't know if I can send you a PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to send it to her, and she's going to send it to everybody so we all have a copy of it. Because I know I said to you that it's very concerned that we would be over an hour. But we're good. We're done. Thank you guys for your time. Yeah, that went through that fast. I'm so happy.